Hello everyone, Obi Wan Dam here, and welcome back to Let's Play Lords and Villains Episode 2 of the Guide series. Today's main topic will be zoning. So we'll take a look at the different kinds of zones or the different kinds of fealty types you have inside of these zones and how you can use um, zoning to balance the economy, find control, what resources you are taxing from your villagers and also how you can move money from the richer families to the poorer families without simply seizing the money from the riches and granting it to the poor, which is something you can of course do because you are the Lord. But um, there's also a way to have the game more or less automatically do that. And I will show you how that is done. But before we do that, I have a tiny tip for you, which is about the inaccessible structure dialogue. If you, as you can see, we still have this inaccessible structure warning. And that's something uh, it took me a while to figure out, or I think the devs told me that that's how it works. So um, you can see there is a magnifying glass in this, in this dialogue. And if you click that, um, you will be brought to the person who had problems accessing a structure. And if you click the same magnifying glass again, you will be brought to the item that was inaccessible, which is way more useful than the person um, because here is where we want to fix the problem. So you can see it's the um, chopping block, which is blocked by this tree. So let's go ahead to storage, doesn't really matter, um, and just deconstruct these trees so people can actually use the chopping board. Okay, so that's this. Um, another question I was asked is why I only have parts of the houses laid out. And the reason for that is um, we only have two foragers. So the amount of wood that is available is not very, um, very big. If you go to the Biles family and look for what they need, they just want to sell four wooden or four wood. They want to purchase wooden rods so they are the family that produces them and they want to purchase them because they they want to build um the walls of their house and they can't because there's not enough of that and having demand not fulfilled will increase the prices and i would um especially in the beginning where we need lots of construction materials i want to prevent construction material from getting extremely expensive over time so that's the reason I only lay out parts of the houses so that um, the demand for construction material will not increase too much and thus keep the prices relatively stable. Um, we also have one family to, um, to give a home to, which is the fishermen. I don't know where they went. I think they are standing right over here. Yeah, so they will also get their zone. Um, okay, so let's get started we now have yeah we have the farm of uh, the the taylor family over here and i can show you um, some some zoning tricks using the taylor family first of all um i need to remove the bed because that's in the complete wrong location um because the bed of the of you guys need to go uh, need some help with some walls not much um, we have this then we'll go down to I think right here one two one two three four wall is going right here and right above that we will place this straw double bed yeah I would really love to have this um, layouting tool so that we can already lay out the the structure of the of the houses so you could see what I'm actually trying to build over here and not look at this weird mess I produ I'm producing but that's fine okay so um, Basically, we will have the kitchen and the living room in the south down here. We have the bedroom on this side and this area over here. That's going to be the work area of the tears. So we are going to remove parts of the zone we have just like this. And let's take a look at the production material we need for um, 
for the tailor. So the tailor needs three different things. He needs the loom to make yarn into silk. He needs the tailoring workshop to make, well, yarn and silk into clothing, fine cloth and capes or fine clothes and capes. And he also needs the spinning wheel to make wool into yarn. And now let's say we want the tailor to make um, all three of these things. We want yarn, wool, uh, not, we want yarn, silk and clothing, but um, we don't want to tax the yarn. So be because, well, we as the royal family, we can't use it. We can't use the, um, the silk for noble bats. And we can also use clothing, of course, that's pretty, pretty simple. Um, but we have no real use for yarn. So we want the tailor to keep all of that. So what we're going to do is we will place the spinning wheel um, we will also place the loom and we will place the tailoring workshop right here. Um, we'll then do a cabinet storage like this. Does the cabinet also store yarn? No, it does not. What does store, uh, I mean wool? Where's wool being stored? It's not right here. It's not the barrel. It's not on the shelf. It's not in the cabinet, it's not in the bookcase. Um, what does store ya uh, wool? Or oh, maybe it is the ground storage. There's something off screen that I can't see. Huh, that's interesting. Or oh, maybe it's in the chest. Yeah, wool and yarn are stored in the chest. So we will add one of these and then just a ground storage. That's something we always need. Okay, so now we have this set up. And what we're now going to do is we go to zones and we will add a tailor, tailor workshop. And now we'll make sure that we set up two of these. One. And then two. Now we have two of these. And you can see this one has the spinning wheel. So we will go to adjust priorities. Um, well, let's keep it at four. Um, let's remove silk and let's remove cloth. Clothes. Like this. And then we will go to the other one. And we will just remove yarn from here. And we don't need a second tailor. We could use another forager or another farmer. Um, and now we will give this to the tailor. And we can give them the thing for free. Like this. And we will give this to the tailors with sockets. Um, we will not need much. Um, let's... Actually, I think we can leave that at 10%. We don't need many of the of the things produced. So now you have this. And um, that should cause the, the Taylor family to keep all the yarn because the yarn production is for free or they are exempt from tax. And we now only tax um, silk and clothing. The only issue with this approach um, where I'm not 100% sure if it works is the priorities. We still have the priorities on this zone set to 4 and the other zones are set to 2 and 1 um, but I'm not 100% sure if the tailors will use the priority system across multiple zones. So I'm not sure if this priority is really working as the devs intended or if having the priorities on one zone works the same way as having the same priority set on multiple zones. I don't know. Um, we will see. So for the moment, that's basically how you can tax different goods in different ways. Put the workspaces um, in different zones and you're good to go. That also works for farms. So for, for example, if you, um, uh, if you only want to tax the rice, you will just um, put 
a zone where rice is grown and then another zone where the parsnip is grown and change the different fealty types. That also works. Um, only problem for farms especially is is then hard to adjust the priorities because they will all, always fill in all farm fields of one zone with the single good you um, you assigned in the priorities tab and though um, creating the ratio you want can no longer be done by the priority system but by the size of the fields. So keep that in mind if you want to do that with the farmers um, because that will not be as easy as we as over here. Um, now the next thing I would like to do is um, before we go back to how, how we can use zones for different approaches, um, I want to remove this and I want to create a second one over here. Three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, just like this. Um, yeah, and that's not thirteen. Well, it's fine. Um, we can now give a household to the fisherman. I was hoping that the zone that we assigned to the fisherman would would just reach the water. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we have the household, and then we will have a fishing pool. And just for the sake of it, we'll do this uh, thirteen as well, even if it is not needed. This would technically be enough. That's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, something like this. Um, we'll most likely just connect them. But that's that's okay. We'll assign this to the Verdun family for free. And we, you will get this socket. Not much. Just 30% should be fine. Um, and now I think we need to grant stuff. We need to grant food to this family and we also need to grant yarn um, how much do we want to give them we can give them 30 that's completely fine do something like this um, and then we have enough for I think two fishing rods for the family um, and then we will just add three of these they will be able to build them and um, I think they should be able to repair them for a while until the yarn is running out, um, but that's okay. So next up we have the bedroom. So let's go to furniture. Um, I do want more fishes, so we will go with a double bed. And that will again go right here. We will use the same layout as um, we have for the for the foragers over here because they have this this garden area to the left and then we can just extend this to the fishing ground so that's going to look pretty good i think okay so now we have that um, we can assign this royal forest to the biles family um how much sockage do we have on this one uh it's also 30 percent yeah so we will we will do the same thing over here let's also do 30 Give that to them, just like this. And now let's just adjust the priorities. Um, we don't have a, horse, a sawhorse over here, so we will remove planks from right here, and we will also remove all the rest. So I just want to have wood production over here. Um, let's take a look at the farmer family. How much sockage do we have on the food? Nah, that was the priority tab. Well, that was completely wrong. Um, it's it's actually fifty percent. I'm not sure if that's good. Let's let's turn that down because we already have lots of people in here. Uh, let's also go with thirty. That's okay. Um, the things that have already been oh, that's also something you should you, you should keep in mind. Um, if you take a look at the family's accounting report, look at that. Um, accounting report. You can see that f the they produced 136 parsnip, and 68 of these 
Another fisher. Uh, no, not yet. We cannot keep up with the yarn production. Um, so they have 136 parsley produced, and they have um, 68 of them were taxed. So um, that means um, the goods are taxed at the moment of production and not at the end of the season when they will deliver the taxed goods. So they will set aside the amount that is being taxed and then they will deliver that to the royal family at the uh, start of the next season. So changing the tax during during the season, like we did just now with the farmers, will only affect um, things that have not yet been produced. So from now on, they will be taxed 30%, um, but this will not affect the goods that have already been produced just because the season hasn't ended yet. So keep that in mind that changing changing the tax rate only affects um, goods that will uh, that are still um, that are yet to come. Um, okay, next thing I would uh, like to show you. Um, we set up the two different tailoring workshops so that the tailor can keep all of the yarn. You can also use it, um, this double zoning to have a similar effect um, if you want to keep a certain, a certain good. So for example, um, how much space will we give the animals? I think for this will be the fence right here. So let's remove this portion. And then we will add another farmland. So you can do something like this. Um, I'll just quickly show you how this is going to look like. We will add a, a wooden fence in the center. Uh, wait, a wooden fence gate to the center and then wooden fence around. Just like this. Okay, and then we can keep the animals in here. And now what we can do, we can go to the priorities. Soil and products don't really matter. We go to animals. And, and we set this to, two, uh, to have two cattle. Let's go to here and have this to sheep. Um, sheep can go to the farmland that has sockage because wool will not be taxed. The royal family cannot do anything with wool, so it's not being taxed. So all of the wool that's being produced should go to the or should be able um, or should go to the tailor because it's being sold by the farmer family. But now on this side, um, let's say we want to have the cattle and we want to keep 100% of that. So we will set this to stewardry. Um, just like this. And now all of the milk that's being produced right here will go to us um, because, well, we use that for stewardry. Um, the only issue we now have is if we continue with the day, I'm not sure when the stewardry will be paid. Let's look at the, Take a look at the money on the left side. Okay, money is not removed yet, um, but it will be. So at the moment, um, the whole system is set up with no money being transferred because all the households are for free. But we now have a stewardry tax that we are paying to the, to the farmer family. So that means our money will go towards the villagers money pool. And at, at some point we will run out of money because we don't make any yet. But what we can now do is we have multiple families available um, and they should all have a chest except for the fishermen. Wait a second. We will give them a, a chest as well. Let's go to chest. Build one right here. Uh, resources sold out. That's fine. So... Um, now the overall money of all the villagers will increase because we will pay stewardry into the system and our money will go down. I would really like to have a baker, but we don't have a miller yet. So we will pass on that. Um, okay, let's continue the thought. Maybe we can just pause. No, we can just 
let it run. It's fine. Um, so now the money of the villagers will grow. And at some point, at the moment that's fine because we have lots of that, so we can increase the size of the money pool for the villagers. But at some point we want the money pool to, to stay constant because well, we, we simply cannot pay it. Or we want to keep some spare money just in case there is an emergency for whatever. Um, or the, there will be the traveling salesman in the upcoming patch. But now what we can do is we will take a look at the possessions of all the villagers. Um, so this is the family. Let's take a look at the inventory. This is the farmer family that we paid with stewardry to. So they possess roughly two gold. The Biles family, they own also almost two gold. Let's take a look at the... They also have two gold. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone just has the two gold they arrived with. Yeah, so the fisherman is the richest family. It's not by much, but they are the richest family. So what, what you basically want to do is you give stewardry to the farmer, which usually are the poorest families, um, because they only produce the food stuff. And if you overproduce food, the prices will drop. So at some point, um, to be safe for the winter, you want to overproduce food. So at some point, the farmers will be the poorest family. And giving them stewardry to take care of some of the animals or to take care of, for example, an orchard so you um, with some apples is a nice way to feed some money into the system and also feed that at the point of the poorest family. So you want to make sure that the poorest family, which usually are the farmers, get the stewardry tax. And then you go to the richest family Look for their household and just change this back to fee farm and set it to the same amount of gold that you have stewardry. So we will not set it to 10, we will just set it to 5 because for the moment we want the villagers um, money pool to increase and that way you not only balance the overall money between the villagers and you, it still uh, in total remains at zero so mo no money will be taken out of the villager pool or being fed into it but you also balance out um, that some families are richer than other families you can of course also do that in a pretty dumb way Th the game will allow it so you can just go somewhere to the side and um, just go ahead um, for example and just add a bunch of household zones and then you can just set this to fee farm give that to the villagers and set it to fee farm they will pay for it even though they can't use this spot at all it's just basically um a money transaction area over here then you just go ahead and um yeah for example if you want to give money to i don't know the butcher just set a butcher zone right here nothing you you do over here and then uh, choose a family bring that to stewardry they will not produce anything in here but they will receive the gold so that's the lazy way of doing things um i like to do it with the with the regular zones that actually do something instead of some uh, doing something like that but it works just in case if you want to do it that way feel free to do um the um thing i just told you the um getting money out of the pool from the richest families and giving it to the poorer families. That's also the reason I give every family an actual household and not build the the beds and the housing for the family um, in one spot. So for example, if, um, if you look at the Taylor family, if you don't want to do that, we can just make the entire square a Taylor workshop, build the bed inside and all of the rest of the furniture and basically have the Taylor family live in the Taylor workshop. That's completely fine um, because by default we don't want to charge the tailors at all anyways. But if for some reason the tailors tend to be the richest family um, we have, we will then be able to use the household of the tailors to get to drain their money while at the same time just keeping the production things that they have um, unaffected. So that's basically the only reason. I give everyone a household so that we have the option to, to balance money using stewardry, to feed money into the system, and fee farm on the household to 
drain money out of the system without affecting the production. And now we just wait for more families to arrive and we also wait for the first day of summer to see what we actually receive in taxes from our families. Um, we really, really desperately need more farmers. Um, you can see they have no time to build the fence. They also don't have any time to tame animals um, because, well, it's just one person actually doing the work. The second person, they're now building the fence, is standing at the storefront most of the day. Uh, the butcher family is nice. I want to accept them. Um, yeah, having a butcher is good. It's another source of food and it's also it also makes sense because we now have um, some animals around anyways. Just wondering if we also want to start and tame some pigs in the royal forest. That might also make sense, but we will see. First of all, the butcher needs a place to live. Um, I guess we will reserve maybe this spot below the below the marketplace or below the storage for market. We might also move the Royal Forest to the right and have the market in the forest. That's also fine. Um, but that means our butcher can live. Yeah, he will live right next to the to the fisherman. That's fine. So let's go to zones household. like this and we will do the same th setup as we did for the um for the tailor over here they will live in the in one portion of the house and then have the butcher's workshop on the other side um we'll just mirror that so the bed will go to the left side let's go the straw double bed um although i'm not sure if i want to grow the butcher family let's see how much people do you have you have two yeah, I think what having at least two children per family should uh, should be okay, just in case someone will die. Um, so we will also give them a double bed, and the double bed will go right here, three spots above. Yeah, right here. So you will be for free for the butchers, just like this. Um, yeah, we also we also need the chest, and the chest will go, I think, right here. Does that make sense? Um, really not. Sh not. Sh wait a second. To th yeah, the bed is at the wrong position. The bed needs to go down by one. Don't know why. That's the center spot, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, it's not. Maybe I screwed up my uh, my sketch. I have a sketch right next to me with a house, and I think I I screwed up the sizes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No, it's thirteen. Okay, let's. Let's wait a second. We have two spaces right here. Then we have the bed. Yeah, we have. Ah, okay. It just looks weird. So the bed was in the correct position. We have. We want to have one bed right here and one bed right there. And then the chest right here. Okay, so that's correct. And then we will have the butcher's workshop in this area over here. Um, let's give them some food. Grant normal meals, 40 to the butchers. Okay, now you can see stuff is being brought over to us. We get fire, we get firewood? No, we are making firewood, I hope so, right? Um, we also received 10 copper. That's the... That should be the 
fee from over here. Wait a second. I receive 80 at the end of the season. So yeah, 80 copper at the end of the season. 75 plus five. And over here, we are paying 10 and 150 at the end of the season. Or is this just accumulated? Yeah, that's just 15. I don't know why we got money. It's it's okay. Um, tax payment day. Let's see what they will bring us. They should bring lots of stuff. Hopefully. We received fish, we received parsnip, and we also received rice grain. Oh, let's take a look at the priority system for the farm. Because rice is now out of season. So that means a bow maker. I have never seen that. But we don't need that yet, I think. Um, so we will set this to corn. Parsnip can stay. Um, that's fine. But I think I want to have some more soil available. It's it, it might be too much, I'm not sure. But I want to have this much additional soil. We really need more farmers to help out over here. But that's okay. Um, we now have some wooden rods. We also have some planks, but that's also not much. Yeah, so it's it's really unfortunate that we don't get more children. Let's pause and take a look at them. Collecting things and collecting things. Did we remove? No, we did not remove the food. Let's remove the food from here. I want them to conduct, collect or to, to chop down trees. So at the moment that, yeah, the tailors cannot produce stuff because there's no yarn coming in. Yeah, so we need to stop accepting families except for farmers and foragers, I think. Um, or maybe even yeah, farmers and foragers. Because we cannot build anything right now. And um, we are also running, might be running low on food. And we will never, be ha never have time to actually start doing something with the animals. Um, but that's fine. That, that's an issue for, the for another episode because we are at the end of this one. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.